Okay, we're back again, and we have two Warwick bases today that we're going to do a comparison of, a review of, and a little mini comparison shootout playthrough of. The first one here, also these are both German-made Warwicks, the real deal. This one here is from year 2000, and this is a streamer STD, or streamer standard. And this is not a very well-known base, and it has a history to it. This is the predecessor to the rock base. So the rock base of today is a very, very popular base. And before Warwick got into the budget base business, they just made their stuff in Germany. And then in the early 2000s, it just became really popular that every high-end maker had to have a budget line. So this is pre-budget line, and it's a really cool base. As always with Warwick, you get unique woods. This wood here, if you look closely at the grain pattern, it's a type of pine wood. It's called Carolina, not Carolina, Carolina pine. Really nice finish on it. It's a gloss finish, but it's a very thin gloss finish. The neck is a Warwick standard, and it, the wood on this, on both of these, the back neck wood, is called uh, Ovancol. It's an exotic wood that uh, I've never seen anyone but Warwick use. Probably some boutique builders will use that. Um, but it has an interesting sound and interesting sound characteristics to it. The fretboard here is Wenge. And it's a really cool looking wood. A lot of figure to it. A lot of veins in it. Looks a little bit like ebony from the distance. Um, but a streak. It's a heavily, heavily streaked ebony. So that's Wenge. Five strings. Double humbuckers. Double buck as it's known in uh, the Warwick circles. Made in Germany. I'd say this one's about 11 pounds. Now let's take a look at the other one. Warwick's most well-known base, the Corvette. This is a Corvette standard, early to mid-2000s model, fretless. And fretless is a new beast entirely. Here's the thing about it. Super, super easy to play. Very, very comfortable. The ebony is absolutely the highest quality ebony you can find. It almost feels like glass or onyx. It is just so smooth. I mean, if you had to climb a wall of ebony, you would slide off it like a Scooby-Doo banana. It's just super, super slick. Really, really feels good on the fingers. Uh, the neck is thinner than the five string. Um, I prefer a four string. Five string, you get some tonal um, options, you know, more versatility there, but it's, it's a really wide neck. I have small hands, so I like four string bases. Now, the thing about fretless, if you're unfamiliar with fretless, is it's hard to get the accurate notes. If you're a little bit off where you press down, you're going to have a, you know, an unharmonious note. It's not going to sound right. So it's not a beginner's bass. You have to really get good and practice playing a four string bass. So I'm going to embarrass myself and play this one a little bit. This is actually the first time I've tackled a fretless bass. The open notes sound really good though. <laughs> um, so yeah, this is, um, I would say this body is Bubinga. This is a Bubinga body, a Van Kahl neck, and a single thick ultra black slab of ebony is the fretboard. And this model in particular has upgraded pickups. These are DiMarzio standard J model jazz bass pickups. As far as the difference from the Warwicks, not a huge difference. The Warwicks were pretty great pickups to begin with, so it's, it's an apple and oranges comparison. Some people will like these better, some people will like the other ones better. Um, so that's these, and um, the reason I got these is we do buy and sell guitars, and I think this is the best value for bass out there right now. Um, I think they absolutely ooze quality, and you can get one of these used the way we price them, cheaper than you would pay for a new rock bass, or a new kind of deluxe made in Mexico uh, Fender bass. So I think these are pretty much the best bang for the buck for bass. A lot of people recognize that, so they've been a popular seller for us. And I love them, they just ooze quality. Um, this one is heavy as well. You're, you're always going to be over 10 pounds with a Warwick standard. They don't take up a lot of space, they're just incredibly dense. So uh, playing a Warwick, it almost looks, it's like playing a tree. 
You know, it, it looks like a tree that a, a wizard has slept under for 50 years. They're really earthy in their, their look and feel. So now we're going to play them. Um, I actually played through uh, a tube amp, a guitar tube amp, and we adjust the settings to make it sound good for bass. So uh, for a full-size gig, probably a high wattage bass amp would be needed, but a low wattage uh, Eggnator tube amp like we use sounds really, really good for recording and in the house for bass as well as guitar. So now let's, let's fire up the tubes and see how these sound. Okay, one of the cool things about this is you can play it as a four string or a five string. So let's play a familiar note with a big first string.
play the Corvette a little bit. Their output is different. Believe it or not, the single coil bass here puts out a little bit more sound. So we're going to turn it down just a little bit. So it's equivalent. How do I play it?
two bases. And um, I'll give you my impressions on the different elements. This one is clearly the brighter sounding bass. Single coil pickups is part of it, but also ebony is not just for decoration. It is an extremely clear, transparent wood that has an open but focused sound. So that is always going to brighten up your tone and give you more note distinction. It's a very, very thick ebony fretboard. This one plays easier on the fingers, but obviously you will make mistakes because it's fretless. So I was kind of uh, hugging the dots and playing within the dots because I've never really played a fretless before. So um, I think it's a bass that's easy to uh, play, but hard to master. And this one has a more blended tone. The humbuckers aren't as distinct as the single uh, coils. And uh, it's deeper though. The, the fifth string, or the first, this one here, the big fat one, it's a lot, lot deeper sounding. So you can get some really cool, deep bass lines from that. And, um, you know, it's just a slightly warmer sound on this one. But uh, they're both good. And as you can tell from the sound demo, they're both very different. So hopefully you uh, watched me struggle through playing these and you enjoyed this clip. We're done. See you next month.